we're going to take a look at business objects here. So on screen, you can see this is the home page for business objects 4.3. The reason we use uh, products like business objects is for the flexibility that it allows people. Obviously, iTrent has hundreds and hundreds of uh, off the shelf reports at your disposal, but you can't really change them. If you need any extra fields adding in, or if you'd like some different calculations in there, that's where this comes in. So you have the iTrend database at your disposal. You can start writing your own reports, putting in your own formulae, formatting them however you need to. Now, Business Objects is a license based model. So each user should have their own user account. And then if you need to, you can apply security against any of those things, whether that's just I want these people to only be able to view these reports, but not change them or delete them, or whether you want them to see different cuts of the data. So user A can see everything, but user B, I never want them to see anyone on this payroll, for example. It's very, very configurable. So if you uh, let us know what details you need, then we can put that in place if it's required. In terms of report building, the uh, product we tend to advise people using is this one called Web Intelligence. It's got all the best bits of all of the uh, SAP's other report products all in one place. When you come to build a report, the first thing that this is going to ask you for is where's your data? Now, in most cases, this will be this called a, a universe. What a universe is, is the middle sort of thinking layer between your database, in this case, iTrend, and your reporting product. And within your universe, the idea is that you've done all the hard work. So all of the data tables are linked together appropriately. All of the objects are identified to say, this is numeric, I want it to sum up when you use it, or this is a date and this is the date format I want you to use. This is a text object and this is how long it's allowed to be and that kind of thing. So that by the time it comes to me, the report right, writer, all of that is taken care of. I just have to drag and drop the objects I want and all the hard bit in that SQL statement it's going to be creating in the background, that's all done for me. So if I click on universe and see down here, I've got my uh, iTrend universe. And this pops up a query panel. On the left hand side, we have all of the reportable objects from iTrent. And underneath in this functions thing at the bottom, we have some off the shelf filtering things that you can use. So things like uh, show me anything between the start of the previous month and the end of the previous month so that you're not getting prompted for dates if you don't want them to. There are loads of useful things in there. Everything else has been grouped together in a very, very similar way to the iTrend menu options themselves. And as I expand any of these, I either get the filters coming up there, or if I keep going, I can get to the objects themselves. These things with a little blue icon are called dimensions, and these ones with an orange ruler, they are measures. So these ones are generally sort of numeric, and they will sort of either count or sum or average, depending on what object it is. If I hover over it, you can see a tooltip there that tells me exactly what it is that that's going to do. That's on the left. So these are my available objects. On the right, the result objects up here, this is things I've selected that I want to be in my report. They don't have to be in my report, but if they're not up here, I won't be able to use them. And then lastly, under here, the query filters. This is very, very important. So iTrent is a data effective system. So when I'm selecting anything in iTrent, your cursor goes to the top of the screen and says, tell me a date and I'll tell you the answer to whatever you're looking for, say contractual hours on such and such a date. The same applies in here. If I haven't put any query filters down here, I'm going to get the entire history of my data. So, for example, if I pick a few objects here just by double clicking on them, say uh, personal reference, forename, surname, gender, uh, count of the number of people, and then uh, ethnic grouping, for example. At the moment, I've got no filters down here. So, if I were to run this report, I would get every employee there had ever been in my business appearing in my end data. Not really what I want. So if I double click on this filter object here, you can see it pops that into here and then that's only going to be showing me people who are still a valid employee today. 
You don't have to use the off the shelf filters. If there's one that you want, you can drag these across into here. For example, and say, I only want people with a surname of Smith. Or I only want to see people whose joining date was in the last week or the last month, whatever you need. So you can put in as many filters as you need. You can create your own, or you can use these ones that come with the product itself. I'm just going to choose a few more objects in here to bring back other details. So I'm saying I want the uh, organization structure now to say, show me level three and level four. So where people work, what reporting unit they're in and show me the current reporting unit. And lastly, their job title. And who is the current occupant of that position? So anything related to positions, I need to have a filter for occupancy, see who's in that job. A position belongs to a unit, I need to put a filter for that. A unit belongs to a structure, I need to put a filter in for that too. Whenever you're running a report, always have a sense check of your filters, because if these are not correct, your report won't be correct. So it doesn't matter how pretty you make it look in the end, it's wrong. It's not worth the paper it's printed on. Once I've selected all my objects up here and put all my filters down here, I can click on the run button at the bottom. This will go back to the database and fetch all of the details that I've asked it to. And the first time I've run it, I get all of those details I've picked in this sort of Excel friendly table. Now it could be that that's all you need and you can save that report or you can export those details if you wish. You can export any report in here to say uh, an Excel document or a PDF document, depending on how you formatted it really. Or we can start to bring that data to life a bit and add some visuals. So if I select a couple of objects over here, say gender and the number of people, for example, in my universe, this number of people object has already been um, told to sum up based on whatever it's in a table with. So over here, for example, it's next to the employee in positions. So it's going to be one per row. There's only one Terry Herbert in that job, so it's a one. Over here, when I put it next to gender, it's looking at all the male employees and adding it up automatically for me. So I don't have to do anything else with it. Once I've got that in here, if I wish, at the click of a button, I can say, I don't want that to be a table. I want to turn it into a chart. And you have hundreds of different charting options in here to select from. So I can say I want it to be a pie chart or yeah, I'm, I'm not that fussed on a pie chart. I want that to be a column chart instead, for example. Whatever you need. And then within here, there are all sorts of different formatting options. So I can change the title of, of that graph. I can change how the uh, axes are displayed, the font, the size, whether I want the data labels in here. So rather than that just saying it looks like 200, I can actually put something on there so that it spells out that is 200 and so on female employees. Lots to select from. Having done that, if I say I want to have um, ethnic group, for example, and the number of people, drag that somewhere else on screen, and then I want to turn that, I'll turn that into a column chart. <clears throat> and it's the same details that are in this uh, table over here, just when it's put visually, it's a lot easier to instantly read those details and say the majority of our employees are of white ethnic background sort of we have more female employees than we do male employees, but only just. I can keep going, just dragging and dropping, and then I can align these blocks to one another, and you can see that we're not too far away already from having some equality and diversity details that we can use. I can spend more and more time formatting this to make it look exactly as I want it to be. But a few other things that we can put in here, so up at the top, these are some on-screen filters called input controls. This is where I can start to make one report tick several different boxes. So if I say um, select one for level three, I can change how it appears on screen. So I don't want it to say level three structure, just call it level three. Do I want it to be a drop down list, just a, a tick box list or a free text field? Don't choose a free text field. Do I want that to be equal to that or not equal to that? Do I want to allow all values and so on? Lots of different settings I can choose from. When I click on OK, I just get an option up here. 
And this allows me to filter the details without having to go back and amend my query. So if I'm building this report for an end user, I can put as many of these as I like across the top, and it makes that report much more flexible for them. So now, if they just want to have a look at one particular department, for example, they can filter that to say, just show me human resources. And then looking at my graphs, looking at my details, I can see who are my current employees in HR? Are they male or female? What's their ethnic background? And I can carry on with this, putting as many of these as I like, so that this one report can tick several boxes and be used for several different occasions. Now, if I were to keep going and keep going, I can end up with something far more visual and far more formatted, and then use the other strengths of business objects to distribute this around the business. So here's an example that I've created where it's looking at some turnover details, absence details, and then a, a company dashboard of who works where. So having formatted this appropriately, I can say, here's our current headcount, here's our male-female split, and how many people have left in the time frame that they've selected? What's the turnover for that time frame that they put in? When people have left, why have they left? So a tag cloud here is saying the uh, more people that left for that reason, the bigger than bolder the word gets. So that at a glance, you can see it's because most people resigned. When have they left? So we have a time series down here so we can see when in the year have people left this business. And I've made use of those input controls. So if I wanted to drill down to say, just show me those details for manufacturing, this can do that at the click of a button. And then these are the departments within manufacturing. And where do people work? How many people have left each of these departments and why? Going on to the absence details. This is looking at um, the absence module in iTrent and using the days lost calculation that iTrent does to say how many people do we have, how many people have been absent in this time, and how many days have we lost? And when people have been off, why have they been off? So these are my top five absence reasons. We can see most people, it's because of stress, some musculoskeletal. When in the year have people been off? And again, we can make use of these drill downs to say just for a specific department, when has this happened? And why have people been off sick and so on. Now you can schedule reports in business objects so that you can say I need this to run every month or I need this to run with these date parameters depending on how you've built your report. If you need to you can set up something called a publication which bursts this report out to a distribution list. So effectively what that does is run this report once and then if I've put a um, distribution list based on this organization level three, I can put an email address against each of those. And what it will do is run the report once and then filter it to say, I'm going to filter that for the administration department and send this page to that person. So they only receive what they're supposed to receive. And then it will do it again, but for the finance department instead and send this to the second person. So that again, they get their finance dashboard. Everyone's only receiving the stuff they're supposed to. So you only have to create the report and set up the publication. It does all the legwork for you. And if you set that up every month, you never have to touch it again. It just goes for all the people it's supposed to. Now, back in our business objects report, uh, this page is using um, a function called element linking. Very, very similar to input controls, but instead of choosing them up here, I can click on anything on screen and it applies those filters. So here's our headcount by department. If I click on one particular department, it filters the rest of the page. So this is now, what does my business look like for the manufacturing department? Where do they work? What age band do they fall into? And how many years of service do they have? If I click on, say, my female employees within manufacturing, I can then see where do they work and what age category are they in? What's their length of service? And apply as many filters as I wish to and keep on going. You can see here, once I've clicked on one, it highlights the objects I've clicked on. So you can click on it again. It removes those filters bit by bit. So we can start with something fairly straightforward, as I did in this example. A little bit of time on the formatting and the um, interactivity elements within it, and you can come up with something very useful. And as I said, with publications, burst it around the business if you need to as a PDF, or the end users can log in and use it themselves. So 
really, really useful tool to have. If you're not sure about how to build reports or you could do with a little bit of help, MHR have several training courses available that can be tailored to your needs. These can either be a sort of simple training course on how to write reports, or you can have it more as a, a workshop style where if you come to us with some issues that you're having, we can work through them bit by bit. Something like that last example, that's where the assist program comes in very handy. You can log support cases saying I'm having these specific issues and then have a consultant dial in. There's help available if you need it. And within business objects, if you need to write your reports, it's very, very flexible and a very secure platform to be using to get exactly what it is you need. If you need any help with it all, please get in touch.